As it says, it's Drupal superstars versus players, not effective communication for developers. Unfortunately, Mike Bell is very poorly, so I've taken his place. Good afternoon, and thanks for coming to Drupal superstars versus players. The basic aim of this session is for you to be able to succeed with the resource that you use. So the thing about Drupal is it's... Oh, I've gone too fast. <laughs> Who am I? I'm a Drupal developer, consultant, and FEMA. Been working with Drupal since 2009. I'm joint director and technical director of Online Perspectives Limited. I enjoy a nice beer or two. I'm active in the Drupal community. I'm a Drupal Camp London organizer. So Drupal's PHP as we all know, but it's different to the other CMSs like WordPress. WordPress is also PHP, but it's really echoey. But we have to hack it a lot to get it to do what we want, and so is Joomla. So why can't you treat Drupal just like PHP? Hacking core and contrib. Now, that's a no-no. So we've got two st um, types of Drupal developers and Drupal contributors. One's a player and one's a superstar, hence the talk. Drupal player is basically winning. They're doing it on a whim situation, so they're just coding and hacking the code as they see fit, not thinking about the end user or the other Drupal developers that will come across their code. This is some examples of how player works Drupal. PHP in blocks, nodes, views, anywhere in PHP. The point of Drupal is to be controlled via CMS for the clients. The complicated code, the PHP, needs to go into modules or themes. This is an example of when you're trying to update a module and your codes, your PHP is in the view and you're trying to find the site and find out where the PHP is to modify it. An example is when you're given a site by a third party agency who've finished the project and they've passed it on to another client and they've had a lot of issues with it, the first thing you should be looking at is where is the code. The code should be based in a module or in the theme, not in a PHP in a view. Because as a developer, you want to save as little, as much time as possible in finding where the code is. By going into the database, in views for instance, that is a security issue, and it's also causing time that you don't need to waste. <coughs> Hard coding TPA, TPL files with text that cannot be edited by Drupal. So an example of this is a website that they didn't have an understanding of how Drupal worked. They just thought it was a flat HTML site, so every single tpl.php was basically a full HTML site. And when the client wanted to edit it, they couldn't because Drupal wasn't talking to it. They've never heard of panels or display suite. These modules are there for us to use them, so let's use them. Let's reduce our dev time and get our productivity up. Views embed, views and no TPL files. This is a hard coded approach to storing your views in your template files. Um, the way you can obviously do this is using blocks and panes and inside a content um, pane. And instead of by doing the views embed view, you're putting it hard coded into the template, which the end client can't modify. And it's a CMS for a reason. Um, you're there to modify the code, the layout and the structure of the site. Adding jQuery library to page tpl.php or another TPL. jQuery is in Drupal core by default, and many times I've seen jQuery library added in manually. Um, if you want to update jQuery library, then just use the jQuery update module, and that will do it all for you. But bear in mind, when you update it to a later version of jQuery, some of Drupal's interface in the back end won't work. Um, an example is if you're setting it to jQuery 1.8 and you're using panels and views, 
because there's a new function in jQuery, it doesn't work with live. So you're going to have to um, be careful when you're doing that because if you break it for the client, they won't be too happy. SQL queries and TPL files, blocks, views, nodes. You're talking to the database from the from the database, really. You don't want to do that. Um, and the TPL files, all the SQL queries should be stored in a module file or a .inc file. Um, this is because Drupal's two layers. You've got the module layer and you've got the theme layer. The theme layer should just be for the front end look and feel, and the SQL should go into the module in the back end and not in the template.php file. Okay, here's an example of SQL in template.php. This was on a big car manufacturer project and when I saw this I nearly cried because you've got the front end guys touching this and if they break it, it's going to break the site. There's a lot of vulnerabilities from doing this as well because it's in the front end layer and by it being in the front end layer, it's um, rendered last and that is also going to reduce your load time. Sorry, that's going to increase your load time because it's rendering these SQL queries last minute. So what is a superstar? So in Drupal, we've got four key aspects of a superstar or um, someone that's involved in Drupal. You've got a FEMA, you've got the developer that creates the modules, you've got an architect, and you've got a site builder. For a Drupal superstar FEMA, this is the minimum that you should expect of them. They know how their template files work. They know how that your TPL files are overridden via your preprocess hooks in your template.php file. They know that JavaScript in Drupal is used by a jQuery library. And if they were to modify that, then they need to create the Drupal Alter JS hooks to do so. <coughs> Template.php is where all your theme related code goes. So if you're doing your pre process hooks, they all go into here. Um, your form hook, view, hook form alters for the front end look and feel, they go in here. SAS less and CSS. Well, SAS and less are a rendering engine for CSS. But at the end of the day, we want the projects to be in and out the studio in days, not weeks. So by using the new productivity tool like SAS and less, you're achieving that in less time. Superstar developer. They know hooks. They know API.drupal.org exists. They know database is the next best thing. They know Drupal Add.js and where to use it. They know that Drupal Add.js is there for um, compressing your JS into one file. So when you turn performance on, your JavaScript is all in one file and your site loads nice and quick. They know .inc files exist for including and not .inc.php. But in Drupal 8, that's changing. They know .info file is where all the information for the module is stored. Um, and the dot module is what's needed for the module to be created and that they know that dot info and dot module are the minimum that are needed for Drupal to recognize that it's a module. They once again know pre-process hooks and how awesome they are. So we don't hack core. They know DB queries, Drupal add CSS, it's the same as Drupal add JS but it's for job M for CSS. Now we move on to superstar architect. And you're wondering what an architect is. It's not someone building the house or specking it out. It's um, they're specking out the site. They're specking out the functionality of the site from what the client wants to what they want to achieve in Drupal and the best and easiest way to do it. They know which modules will do what they want. If you were to look on WordPress, for example, Google Analytics has about 20 modules. Drupal.org has one. They know how to make clients' dreams become reality. Client wants Facebook for 200 quid or whatever. Um, 
they know how to understand that it ain't going to happen for 200 quid and what modules and functionality will be required to make the site work. They know how to integrate Contrib with Custom or if they need to modify a module, they know that they don't need to recreate the module and then change it all the names in the files and then class it as their module and not update it as security because if that module on D.O. is released with a new security update they're going to have to modify it in their custom module and um, that's going to cause a lot of issues. They should be patching it if they're going to do anything like that but then that's more of a developer. So, Superstar site builders they know views, they know how the arguments and contextual filters, they know context, they know display suites, they know panels, panelizer and panels everywhere. They know organic groups, not that they really want to, but they know rules, they know features. Features an interesting one. It can uh, kill your site if you don't do it properly, and it's a bit of a lazy approach when you can use your update hooks. But then it's for a developer again. Where do you find a Drupal superstar? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this room. <laughs> issue queues. If you go on D.O. and there's an issue submitted for a bug that you're trying to fix, there'll be someone there that's probably fixed it for you. Word of mouth, it was a conference for instance. Drupal IRC, good Drupal IRC channel is Drupal hyphen UK. Um, a lot of senior Drupal developers in the UK are always on there and able to answer any questions that you have. And then if you want to contribute to Drupal, it's Drupal hyphen contribute and you've got um, Old Miles and Angie all on there. Pub and social events. As Drupal developers and the Drupal community, we do like a nice alcoholic beverage on an evening out talking about Drupal. Um, so if you're out tonight at Source of Lamb, get talking to someone. What I find is that when you're talking to someone, you're saying, oh, I, I built this site, but I had this issue, and they might be able to solve the issue for you. As a community, this is really great because I'm pretty sure that other communities don't really do this, and Drupal is very special in that. Twitter. Hashtag Drupal is always a good one to look at. Um, there's a lot of people, and if you just tweet about your problem with hashtag Drupal, you're likely to get an answer in seconds. I'll go get them. And now for something completely different. <laughs> I should have the music side. <laughs> Rescue projects. So, with a rescue project, you've been given a new project from a client that they've had another agency build, and the other agency have just given up and walked off. You're given this project, you look at it, yeah, you quote a day to look at the code and say yay or nay. You've got two choices, the blue or the red pill. With a rescue project, you as the agency want, at the end of the day, as an agency, you want to make as much money as possible for doing as little work. That's how a lot of agencies work. Um, so you've got the blue pill, the red pill. The red choice, or the red pill, you're starting it from scratch. The code's no good. It's got embeds of views. You're embedding nodes and TPL files nonstop. Um, it's just painful to look at. So you start from scratch, and you tell the client that. You're like, what the fuck's going on here? Or you've got the blue pill. You continue on. Days and days of painful labour, working at the code, stressing out and patching as much as you can. But you make a lot of money, so it's all good. Any questions? <laughs> 